The following is a production of the University of Minnesota, driven to discover. Hi, this is David Arendale, your host for PAL Groups. It's a podcast that focuses on interviews with students who serve as study group leaders in courses which are historically challenging for many students. Many of those who are interviewed will end up serving here at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities, but also will include others from other campuses here in the near future. Well, our person for today is on. She serves as the facilitator for a study group inside of a college algebra course. Two things to watch for in her comments. One is, is her use of jigsaw, in which that it's a peer cooperative learning technique in terms of being able to divide up the number of questions among a larger group in order to give more time for processing. The second thing for you to notice is, is notice her accountability techniques in order to make sure that everybody inside the small group understands the process. And then a third item is intentional use of movement of students within the room in order to increase their engagement, particularly for study groups that meet really early in the morning. So let's go ahead and listen to on. Welcome, everyone. Glad you're joining us for another one of our interviews with our PAL facilitators here on campus. And we're having a chance here to visit with Ann. So why don't you tell me just a little bit about yourself or all of our other listeners? Oh, okay. My name is Ann, and I'm major in math education in COA, a third year junior. My hometown is I'm from originally in Vietnam, and I moved to America about like, I'm staying here about four and a half. What course is it that you serve as a PAL facilitator? I call it algebra. Most students are freshmen and few are sophomore, and it fills in the math requirement from the youth. And for the students that are in there, what kinds of academic degrees are they pursuing? Are a lot of them in science, math, engineering? Or? Yeah, most of them in math or engineer or okay. science. What is it about a math course that is makes it challenging for a lot of students? Because across the United States, the most common class that is college algebra courses. So what is it that's particularly challenging about the course material? I think the challenge in e kind of, it's not really hard math because it can make it give the student a chance to know how math works. But um, because because it is the first curve of math, so it general information, a lot of um, formula to remember, and work problem. So students, when they start with math, they kind of like too much information, too much formula to remember on the exam or the quiz, and they have quit every week, so, and the homework. Actually, if you do math, you have to like practice doing problem to get you to it and to get like kind of remember the formula, how to do the formula. So they capture. Well, thank you. And I think those are the same kinds of challenges across the U.S. It's also why college algebra is so foundational to all of the science, technology, engineering, mathematics, STEM course programs, because those are the fundamental skills that you just named off for things that they're going to need to be successful in those college majors. Then. Well, talk to us just a little bit about a couple of strategies or activities you do during your sessions that seem to really help students to master the material? I do like a couple of different activities. Two is activities. Uh, activity one, I kind of divide by student in group, assign specific question. Like group one will be do number one, group two will do number two, and make sure everybody in your group know how to do it. Because after that, after discussion, after solve solution, I will pick up randomly the billboard the group member go to the board and write out a solution and they have to know how to explain. So everybody inside the group needs to know yep. and, and your strategy here, since you randomly select, they don't know yeah. who's going to be asked to come up. Boy, does that make them a little bit nervous the first time? Yeah, they. Um, I do the survey and some people don't like it because they said like surprising. But the main point is like in a pal. The student need to discuss with another people help each other. If like only one people in group know how to solve, they will volunteer and let like the other behind. Right. So I try to like guess people help with other to make sure that okay I understand that problem. I'm just give them one problem, specific one. Okay, group one do one, group two do two, like something like that. So they don't have like too much question at the same time, you know. Only one question and I can help each other out. 
Well, that's another strategy you're talking about is that they focus on a single problem rather than you assigning them two, three, or four or five problems at the same time. Mm -hmm. Wow. So they really do have to focus on the problem-solving approach by doing that. Yeah. And everybody has got to be responsible. You know, that's one of the strategies they teach in small group project work is that individual accountability. Here, everyone better be responsible because who knows who might be called up to the board what happens if they go up to the board and they act confused? They act confused. I will like make up the question, ask you like, what you confuse, uh, where do you get stuck, and why is it? And then I will try to like, remind them the formula to you in that. So you'll give them some clues then. Yeah, some and, clues, some hints. And you kind of reduce them the stakes here to where they'd be embarrassed if they don't understand. It's okay for them to identify what they don't understand then. And any other specific things that you really found have been really helpful? Because I know a lot of the uh, PAL groups use worksheets and such. Is there anything else particular that you like using? Other uh, thing I... Put the um, question, like a number of the student by number, divided by group by number, and then I have five or six questions. I put um, different location, a different homework, uh, the question. Group one will start with question one, group two will start with question show, and so on. And they have like five minutes to do each question. They rotate. After five minutes, they need to move to the next question. So kind of rotate. To make them to move. To you know, there's, so actually you're bringing in this whole issue about just simply the physical involvement and maybe that kind of perks people up a little bit more. Because like, I have the morning session, ah. uh, the early one, and I, the early one starts at 8.30 and the other one is 9.35. Uh-huh. And I kind of like a little bit not awake after they jump out of their bed, you know. So they just sit down and do do how do rap them, didn't talk much. So if I make them to come, stand up and move, they start like, okay, earn some energy and wake up a little bit. Well, that, it seems like such a small thing, but that's really important. I, uh, I like that idea. <laughs> Frankly, there's some uh, professors that maybe ought to move around a little bit more because we don't move very fast until we drink a lot of coffee in the morning. So anyway, thanks. That's really good. Huh? I enjoy that. Well, let's go ahead and move to our final question. What is it that you personally and professionally are getting out of this experience serving as a PAL facilitator? I think I gain more confidence in front of people. It kind of gives me a train to practice uh, with my pronunciation, gain more organization with work, management of classroom environment. And sometimes it's kind of hard, but I get experiment. Like I need to improve what my wisdom is, or I can gain some trends I can know to do in the survey or to gain some experiment while I'm working. And I'm talking with another co-worker or I go to class and discuss and how they uh, solve the behavior problem from this. Wow, that's a whole, that's a wide set of skills that you're learning and all of that. Remind us once again uh, what you think that your future career will end up being. I major in math education, so I want to be a teacher. Okay, so you see on how these may all be really valuable helping you as a teacher then. Well, excellent. Well, thanks for so much for coming in and sharing with us, on. We appreciate it. Thank you. Well, thanks for listening to this episode. More information about PAL is available at the website palgroups.org, P-A-L-G-R-O-U-P-S dot O-R-G. Join us next time for another interview about peer-assisted learning. Until then, take good care and good listening.